marriage, the journey of two becoming one. But the question is, are we more excited and passionate about the wedding day or the journey of being married in itself? So we created the show Winning Together to speak to marriages. We hear couples tell us about their journey in being married, the highs, the lows, the pains, the sacrifices, the challenges. You know, what it really means when two people from two different backgrounds, lifestyles, experiences come together and are trying to form this blending process. What's the kind of thing that happens in the pot of soup <laughs> called marriage and what makes it delicious? We hope that these series would bring healing and help to marriages. It will be light direction. And more than anything, it will just let any couple out there know that you are not alone in your challenges. Everyone is on this journey together. And our challenges are not meant to separate or divide us, but they are meant to strengthen and unify us. Enjoy the series. And remember to leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hi. Hi, I'm Matilda. I'm Tunde. And we are your Kofis. We've been married for 10 years now. And we've been blessed with three amazing children. It's been 10 years of uh, an amazing and interesting journey, um, full of growth and, and learning. I remember from very early in our marriage when you'd be like, ah, oh, babes, I think we need counseling. <laughs> And I was like, ah, never. People would think we have a bad marriage or we have issues in our marriage. But it's interesting that everything we've learned and dealt with through the years mm -hmm. has stemmed from that place of communication mm -hmm. and not knowing enough, not having started with all the understanding and knowledge that we would have gained from. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have any regrets about that. Mm -hmm. But that's what the learning has, has stemmed out from in terms of one of the greatest blessings in our marriage has been counseling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so um, you know, when I say it's been an interesting journey, I mm. mean, it's <laughs> literally has been an interesting mm. journey. And in, continues in, to be. Yeah, it continues to be. In, in that, uh, you know how they say, it's not, it's not about the, the destination, it's the journey you go through. So um, yeah, even if it's, you know, parts of it felt like it was being forged in fire, in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's still the journey. And obviously, no, it wasn't it's not as deep as fire, but with hindsight, you know, hindsight 2020, you can see other things you could have done differently, differently if you, you know, if you knew better. Looking back, um, and even in the moment, I knew okay that maybe there are things that obviously we didn't know. But looking back, it was clear that we didn't know what it meant to be married. Married. Yeah, we didn't know what it meant. To be we didn't <laughs> We're know, in love. We didn't know what it entailed, really. Mm. Um, so after getting past the. Um, there were triggers from day one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had to learn to dial back on my <laughs> talking. Mm. <laughs> and I say talking, that is just saying anything I felt. Mm. I'm not doing this anymore. I can't even, I can't even, I didn't understand oh, the yeah, dangers. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, laying that so. on, thinking that it was creating an effect that I wanted. <laughs> and the outcome was that he started to believe me. Mm, and yeah. that became. Yeah, so we can say, with, let's, let's, in more detail. So. It's, one happened when we were dating. That's the one that was like the precursor that I would have let me know. So I can't remember what led to it. I think maybe it was maybe it had to do with, you know maybe a text I sent you. Oh, I can't remember. It was something not deep. Mm. But then it ended up with <laughs> with you saying um, that if you if you are not interested again, if you don't want to do this anymore, I don't need this or I don't something. Need it, so you can you can go. I mean, I'm very I'm like ah, okay. And he drove me away. <laughs> I was like, eh, is he coming back? <laughs> so, I mean, I mean like, I, I can take things literally. So, mm -hmm. when, when she said, oh, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm like, okay, I'll see you. Not in the, that, oh, me, me too, I'm also not interested in doing this anymore, but like, there's no point in having this argument. If that's how you feel right now, let me go. That's before we got married. Um, but it was obviously clear for her as like a program, you know, so you use Which one's even honeymoon now? I started did. saying so it. So on the honeymoon. Very, very fickle matters though. I yeah. look back now, I kind of cringe. So she told me, so I mean, on the honeymoon, and it was at, for a section, you know, for a part of the honeymoon where at, um, my, my parents. Went to, went to see his family, yeah. yes. So we're, we're, you know, not in the country in any case. And we're packing or something. We're doing stuff. I can't remember what it was. And then she, we got into one of those moments, and she's like, "I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not doing this. <laughs> this is literally days after the wedding." 
I'm not doing this anymore. In fact, I'm going to my auntie's. You know, because my auntie's uh, mm. in, in that part of t uh, town. I'm going to my auntie's. And it was, it was disturbing because my sister was in the house. It was loud. And I was like, I don't even know how I reacted. You know, I honestly yeah, I'm can't remember. Stunned. I'm yeah, you look, I was, you're looking I was, at me like, is this girl serious? I was like, you know, oh yeah, I remember. And like, what the hell have I gotten myself into? You know, um, like, is this, what I, is this what I'll have to, you know, deal with and put up with? And we had, um, there's one, there, one or two more of those kind of episodes, right? And the, for different things. And the truth is, it's centered around communication. Other things. Yeah. Other um, things. And, well, I don't know if I should say that now, but other things in, that we dis I discovered through counseling had to do with insecurity mm. and pride. Mm. And that was my defense, like, Mm. Other than you heard me, let me let me just sort myself out. You know, that was my response, but it was careless, mm. and I learned that eventually that it was careless, and it was it was hurting you, but I didn't realize yeah, yeah, on how the, much. The, um, the what what's what's the word now? The um, unintentional consequence of that is that I actually believed, you know, believed it. I yes, believed it. I'm like, yes. okay, so this is it's touch and go. At any point any in point time, in time yeah. this babe can say she's done, and after. And then all the wrong things that you hear about, you know, being married and, you know, marriage. I'm like, um, you know, before you go into it and where you're not, maybe there is a little, okay, I'm, am I sure, you know, I'm ready, is this 100%? All those things start to come back in those moments. And that say, is the right person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, because we did, I, I did, honestly, and I said, we've had this conversation, I've had that, I, I, I said that I, that I asked myself that look, really, did I make the right decisions? You know? And all the things start to come back. You know, the words and things that you hear people say, you know, people who sort of canceled your advice, you know, street counseling. <laughs> street. <laughs> before, my, before marriage, I'm like, if it doesn't work out, I mean, what says divorce is always an option, it's not such a big deal, you know? Um, and those things start to play back. I mean, just to be real, is my wife, is she, is she? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing some of this one for the first time. <laughs> Uh, it's multiple personalities in here. <laughs> you know? um, so, yeah. Um, so, I'd, you know. So, the point being is that hearing those things, you know, hearing you say those things, you know, running the program that you ran for, you know, whatever it is, I learned why afterwards, and I can understand it. But the truth is that it made me believe that, and like, okay, is she really I'm, in it? Yeah, yeah. Here yeah, for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> You know, I'm sure yes. not. <laughs> Funny enough, in saying all those things, I never, it, not that I meant it, I wanted it, or I just thought I was, I don't Chakra. know what, yeah, it was more like just to see how much you wanted, you know, whether you would come after me and all those things, which you probably would, you never did. It's not your style, it's not your no, personality. No, no, just walk out, but hey, I want to let it just end. Like, I remember very clearly, even though, dating, this, but, this is me going I mean, back a bit, but even when we're dating and I said it and you actually drew it, I remember feeling like, Eh? <laughs> no, it was to break the but I, also, now. but I had to be like, I am going to call him. I want to text him. Gonna, and Saturdays were our days we spent time together because of work. And then imagine the whole day was just going and he didn't come back. And I didn't want to call. I didn't want to be the one to be like, where are you? They'd be like, I should I should go. <laughs> so I remember feeling now, I didn't, it wasn't a good feeling, not knowing if I had messed things up. This was even dating. So, and because we didn't address it properly, mm -hmm. I carried on with that style of, defending myself or protecting myself in my view. It's very clear from what you're even saying now, it's coming very clear to me that immaturity, not being prepared, like you said, we didn't know what marriage was about fully. We went for counseling, but counseling before marriage, I don't know that it prepares you enough because there's nothing to, you're in that place where you're not, there's nothing to really compare it to, yeah, yeah. this is what it is, and you're just like, you got to get married, and everything in your hand is just, mm, okay, yeah, 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 we've heard, we heard, yeah. you know. So, yeah. It's like, um, it's like, so, counseling before marriage is like, um, you know, when you, when you study something, or you, you are giving a car manual, to make it an analogy to everyone, you're giving a car manual before you actually have driven a car, right? Um, you gloss about it, fine. You may, you may, <laughs> you may hear things, you may understand this is where that is, but until you actually have driven, before the manual kind of makes sense to you in it. So, um, which is why, I, I, you know, I, you it, it became immediately clear to me, no long after that, uh, okay, I think we need counseling. Um, I needed to learn 
um, some things because I guess my attitude can be um, in those moments can be very maybe come across as sometimes dispassionate, you know, and want to look at things like objectively. Like you said, I should go, so I left. I knew what I was doing by going, um, you know, um, and then, you know, you also, now that you're in it, you know, before marriage, someone says, oh, okay, you know, the, the things that they say that, um, um, what's the word, is it wants or wants or needs, his biggest his, needs. His biggest needs, yes. His biggest needs. Respect. Um, being, you know, respect being one of them, you know, shouldn't feel disrespected. Um, and that even being more important than, you know, than, Other things. than, yeah, than sex, for instance. <laughs> um, but it's one thing to hear that before marriage and then, you know, realize that. And, it's, and, you know, it's also not looking at it from it like a traditional, it's not a, someone demanding respect. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not demanding respect. Or anything, but I think it's just you know general things like small, small, small things. Right? The interesting thing is that we never really had issues. Mm. It was the res it was the rea it was the responses to triggers or things that we could have easily talked through or known how to handle differently. We just didn't know how to handle those mm. things differently. It wasn't like we had like any major issues. I think it was more of clash of personalities and egos and those kind of things that were mm -hmm. that characterized that first year of marriage. That's just us melding together, trying to be one as in terms of uh, how we were approaching life and making decisions. First of all, we, I got pregnant, I, th I believe. And I think the first thing... Um, it happened within the first year, too. It happened in the first year, a couple of months after we got married. Then I, but the, I think the first thing we started to learn was distance, although not knowing that, because at some point I traveled to have the baby, and I feel like for a first pregnancy, I just personally looked back and thought, you know, it would have been, it would have been good to do more of it together, mm. not really apart. And then fast forward to, what, what year was it? Third year of marriage? A lot of the initial friction was probably the first two to three years around, you know, things around, you know, communication. Then we sort of found a like a working balance. Within that period, we'd had uh, we'd had our first child, um, and then you were away to have you were away to have. Yeah, that's about the first year, yeah. first year, first two years. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm saying this is that um, not having the right, I won't say the right foundation, but there's some foundational things that we had to have in place that we didn't have in place, mm -hmm. and then um, we experienced grief. I lost my younger brother in 2014. Our marriage was not just, it was not even two years yet, maybe roughly two years plus. Um, and I think that's where things really, we hit something really. That was the first very difficult season of, for me, very difficult season of marriage in terms of how I thought you would respond or how I thought you responded to grief or losing my brother passing away and all the questions I had. But not seeing you cry or not seeing you grieve publicly affected me. And I think that's where I started to discuss. I didn't know that was what was happening, but when I chose to relocate or move away, I thought I was doing it to, to be close to my family because my family lives abroad. And I felt like nobody around me understood what I was dealing with. My mom had to go because when it all happened, it was, a sh it was not like there was a sickness or something that we expected. It, it was a sudden death and it was traumatic because it happened in front of me you weren't there and anyway and all of that i didn't figure i just figured that you didn't feel what i felt or the loss was not as personal for you and i think it hurt me and i didn't talk about it but and also you had this you, were, you had this desire to see me get over it quickly oh i felt that way i felt like you wanted me to just get on with life and move move on move on you know grief grief can invite grief and I know I wasn't doing really well. I was losing weight. I was barely myself. I, we had the baby that I, I wasn't sure I was even able to, I was just in a routine of just caring for him, but I wasn't present. He would go to work. I thought you had a life and I was just alone in my grief with the baby. And my mom had to travel to be with my siblings so that they could just support her in that season. And the next thing I felt like nothing is, work, nothing is happening for me here. And. I, I made a selfish decision, I know, looking back, to just be away, like give you space and have space 
to grieve. I justified it with many things. I can't remember all I said at the time. But you agreed because you wanted me to be fine. And I went away and I, I, I took a course. I just started to just breathe again because in that time I was a shadow of myself. I didn't understand what was going on. I just, everything was just happening around me. I wasn't there. And I can't imagine what marriage was, was like because you had to sacrifice quite a bit. At the time my brother passed, we had to move from my mom's house to be with her before she traveled. And then we ended up staying there, having paid rent in our own in our apartment. I didn't think of all the things you were sacrificing. All I felt was what I needed and I wasn't getting. And, the, and then the pressure of, I wanted to feel seen or understood. You know, you know, grief is an interesting thing. I, I, it was, it was a different experience for me. I experienced loss before with my dad, but it didn't feel the same way when I lost my brother. And people telling you to get over it was very, I just felt very hurt. And I just felt I never had any room to grieve. I was always having to be strong for your mom, be strong for your child, be strong for it. And I was just, everything was just inside. And for someone who extroverted and talked a lot, I wasn't talking. I wasn't, I did I wasn't allowed to talk with you, especially at that time. And of course, you didn't know what to do. I think you didn't know how to deal with the grief, I guess. Looking back at that, that's what it was. But then I traveled and I was away for almost two years. You would come and God was gracious enough. You would come, what could bring you, you know, to, you know, when the UK, what, what could bring you there? Or you would come to visit us. So we got to see each other, but everything was superficial. Now looking back, I don't know that we had, we're building any connection. Cause number one, now our marriage was still very young and we were spending even more time apart not building the things that need to be built, not having the right dynamic, the rhythm was off and on. And yeah, I think it was destructive, but God was gracious. I think it was destructive. I think you, I think you were very sacrificing. You were very accommodating. You didn't, call, and my husband is not the, you're not the verbal type, he doesn't express himself verbally. In fact, he would just tell you he's thinking about something, but you just won't hear any feedback. That's <laughs> even till today, you know, so. It was a challenge because I never knew what I was thinking or feeling really, you know. And we're just doing the routine stuff. Okay, the, the child, this, our son needs this. Oh, I need that. Would you send this? Oh, would you do that? But that's all we're talking about really. Connecting on superficial things in my opinion. But I, I, didn't, I didn't even notice that then. I was just going through the motions, just being. But I think, was, I think one of the first few things that started to help us was I realized very quickly that I was living a single mom life, even though I was married. And it, and it didn't make sense. So I called him after Christmas one year, realizing that he was spending Christmas by himself, New Year by himself, and I was, this is not going to be, this is not good. So I told him, I want to come home, and I want us to be together. And then he said, oh, but you've just gotten a job, and you're just starting to, you know, things are starting to do, go well for you over there. Why not just see things through? You know, just don't start and stop things, just see things through. But I felt, no, this doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm making it just by myself. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of things by myself. The only thing I do is talk on the phone with you or when you come around for a few days or weeks, but it was not feeling right. You coming back was, because she, like she said, she just got a job and she was initially supposed to take leave, right? You're supposed to take leave. It was about six months into the job, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're supposed to take leave and then maybe two or three days before you traveled that you, you said, look, I've, I've, I've resigned, I've dropped my letter, I'm going to fucking, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, dialing back to the, you know, sort of like the beginning of this again, I mean, with, with benefit of hindsight, it's clear that grief is very difficult. And years after I learned, um, I think we both did by, I mean, uh, there's something I stumbled across and realized how large a part grief played in, in divorce. Like a lot of couples that had experienced some sort of grief, either a child or losing someone very close um, and how it ended up leading to that. I mean, I came across research that showed that it was, there was a strong correlation. But it's interesting because anytime, and we've discussed this, you know, a few times, we've, and we, we've, we've said this a few times, um, and each time I, always, I still find it interesting how you can both be in the same place, supposedly looking at the same things, but seeing different things, right? Having entirely different perspectives, um, and because in that moment you felt I wasn't, you know, giving you support. I wasn't, I wasn't grieving with you. 
Um, but you had you had an expectation of what grieving would look like. Would look like. Um, but we've come to learn since then that grieving is different for everyone. Mm -hmm. right? There's a way society, maybe society, maybe expects grieving. It's why you can have professional, you know, grievers and criers <laughs> at, you know, um, because there's an expected form of bereavement. I thought my role, I expect my role was to be strong for you, not cry in front of you. I cried. I was really close to close to Harry, right? Mm -hmm. But I deliberately didn't cry in front of you, and I told him multiple times that I cried. I, I mean, I think people told you afterwards, obviously, that in you know, in moments out of frustration, not everything that was going on. Yeah, I, I did cry, but I. I wouldn't cry in front of you because I didn't see how that, in my view, helped us. Like, you're crying, I'm crying, come on. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, well, that's um, what I, I didn't see that made me feel that you weren't grieving with absolutely. me. Absolutely. And then, you know, that feeling, you know, you explained it, explained other things that happened after then because there'll be things I'll need. And I was spending myself, I was spending, t I was spending money, energy, money time. time, money, just to make sure that everyone was, you know, was fine. And I felt, then there were other things, and I did it because I, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be seen like I wanted it to be seen. But the things that you then did as well as a reaction to you thinking that I didn't, you know, I wasn't. You weren't feeling my pain. I wasn't feeling your pain. That then made me feel like, really, you know, because um, there are moments and times when, like in the planning, and I thought that okay, um, you know, I, you'd call on me. You, you know, deliberately. There's one instance that I mentioned that you deliberately skipped over me, and I was like. Uh, but I'm right here, you know. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a part of this as well. Like you get, it was when what I mean decided tributes. who would do the tributes, who would you know give a tribute, and you immediately skipped over me to give a tribute. And I'm like, like really, and I was <laughs> I was related to him as well. You get, um, but in hindsight, you know, you explaining kind of explain that to me. But it was hurtful. It was painful. But I'm not the best at expressing my emotions, so I didn't say anything um, really um, about it. Grief is grief. Grief is very, it's very personal. And if I, if I was, if I had, you know, if I was better tooled or skilled, I would have probably been able to, if I was maybe trained, you know, phys, you know, psychologist or whatever it is, I probably may have been better equipped at helping you. Um, but in the end, like you said, you were, um, you had things you were battling and dealing with, and you were despairing. That's the truth. I didn't know what to do. Like despairing. So when you said, like I was worried, like this baby will just end it, you know, really. So um, and I don't mean the relationship, like yourself, like you could, you know, do something that was, you know, unthinkable. So when you said, oh, you wanted to move to, because it's something that we discussed over and over, like where we would stay and stuff. So when you said you wanted to. I wanted to change of scenery, you know, like, okay, naturally, it, it, you know. It should help. Yeah, yeah, it would help. Like, a change of scenery would help. Yeah. It did help. It helped. Yeah, you know, it did. It helped it, it me. Helped. It helped. It helped because she, she rediscovered herself, really, in, in setting which started breathing, like you said, and living again. Maybe not having to be around this guy that doesn't know how to be. <laughs> Okay, challenge challenge one is that your personality. You know the emotional type. Even when we're dating, I thought that this guy is not very sensitive. But I felt like I, I could work with it. Not insensitive. Not no. You, you know to it's fine. go it's to emotional things. I just felt like you. You know he's kind of that would be like, um, why are you crying? You're the one making yourself cry. Just you know, or, or suck it in, or you know something. And I'll be like, what kind of response is this? You should be more like, oh babes, don't cry. Oh, I'm so sorry. But he'll be like, what making you cry? Why why are you crying? <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I'll be like, how can you let me go to bed crying? She come and meet me and tell me, ah, and you're like, eh. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so through the years, oh, letting acceptance, I think even knowing your spouse. You know, I wouldn't really change anything, and this is the reason why. I don't know that marriage is supposed to be frictionless. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the things that was an error for us was thinking that everything that wasn't looking right meant our marriage was wrong. Mm -hmm. Instead of being prepared to deal with those issues, we were almost like, wow, well, we're fighting. Issue. Is she the right person? Because we keep fighting. But we didn't learn the tools that would help us communicate better and then reduce the fighting. Because mm -hmm. imagine two, you know the analogy of two rivers coming to, you know, coming to become one. Well, there'll always be like that first initial psh, psh, so it's expected. You're coming together. Yeah, the, the background, the upbringing, the belief systems, everything was not, 
you know, it was not homogeneous. It was not like we agreed on everything the same way, we thought about things the same way, and you're a guy and I'm a girl. So it's completely, you know, different. So we had expectations of what our marriage would look like. And just seeing things not look like that was sending off signals in our head that something was wrong. And I think that was error number one, because it's to be expected. Mm-hmm. And if I was smarter, <laughs> or if I knew better, I may have agreed to counseling earlier in marriage. Mm-hmm. And it may have been better tool to deal with those mm-hmm. moments of friction. Mm-hmm. But then back to grief and coming home and thinking that I, had, I thought I had dealt with it. All this, me saying anything about grief now is looking back and realizing what the issues were. I think it was always communication and our styles of communicating and you, you not being emotional or my, for my view, not being the sensitive type and me being the emotional expressive type being different in that manner and you know understanding why she always crying or why is she emotional or why is she you know and me just wondering why is she so cool so reserved not saying anything you know i would rant rant say everything on my heart and i'm like mm, i'm taking it in i'm like eh? <laughs> can't you do do more like express yourself God, God has been so gracious to us because really we've pushed through many interesting seasons that can easily make or break a marriage. And I think the counseling came at a very good time. A series of events led to that and it was in counseling that I realized that I was harboring unforgiveness towards you because of how I perceived your, you grieving my brother's passing. And I, of course, we never talked about it again. I wanted to just leave it in the past. It was still affecting things deep within, and I hadn't fully let go of the experience of even, I haven't even fully grieved my brother, because I think I kept on wanting to please everyone, and everyone's expression of me. And it was through constantly I realized there were many things I was doing wrong, things that you were doing wrong as well, prioritizing each other, learning that this there was not, were not peculiar, these issues that you're dealing with, not, not just you guys, everybody deals with these things. Why you guys think that you're the only ones mm-hmm. that have these issues? <laughs> Every couple deals with, you know, with these issues, and I think that was eye-opening and encouraging. Very, very encouraging that, okay, it's not n- new, mm-hmm. it's not peculiar, it's not, it's not like, oh, this is, you guys have an issue. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that was probably the... the One of the good, best parts. Yeah, of the best parts in realizing that, you know, you're not... You, you're not alone in that thing. You're not alone, yeah. Let me, in that let me boat. not use the word unique, well, unique, but you're not alone. What you're experiencing, it, someone else has experienced it before, and very often it's more common than you know, right? Um, and it's just that people, if you don't, if you don't educate yourself, you just won't know. And that education come in the form of actual counseling, um, or um, you could be, for lack of a maybe mentorship. When I say mentorship, like, you know, um, counseling through is, you know, an older couple that probably is being through, same kind of thing, um, it's, it's reading, Reading, it's, it's listening to stuff. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's in that time, in that that you know you discovered um, a podcast, Marriage Today. Marriage Today. It really, really, really. That really did us. help us. That, it that, really, that, like God sent that to us because this was year five of our marriage. Yeah, that helped us. Because yeah. I, we got married twenty eleven. I traveled 2014, this is when after my brother passed. I returned to Ni- Nigeria in 2016, so this was like year five of our marriage. I only had one child up until that yeah, time. Probably in year five, if you put all the time that we're together, contiguous time we're together, it's probably maybe two and a half years. It's up to two and a half years. Maybe two years. <laughs> maybe two years, child, of the whole five year marriage. Which is which is the other thing, like on the distance, we, I don't think we've gone, you know, just a bit more on the distance. So for us, it was sort of grief that led onto that. But today you find, um, you, f- you find today is, um, greener pastures, you know, not, you know, for us, you find people younger couples who, so people are, mind, yes. you know, emigrating. Or well, we um, going to study. Going to study. Very early in marriage. Very early. You know, those kind of... Um, decisions. Decisions, you yes. know, so early on, before you haven't... You, know, you, haven't, you haven't found your dynamic, yeah. you don't have a rhythm, mm-hmm. you don't have a system, you, you don't really have a way of communicating. Other, you don't even know yourselves, mm-hmm. then you now live apart and you're superficial in your communication because there's nothing connecting you really yeah. except bills. Maybe. Yeah. Or can you send me some even, more money? I'm even broke. The, ones, the ones that survived <laughs> the initial period where, because, you know, person, some people actually kind of maybe like living apart in a sense. Already. You know? um, and, but they're just postponing the, the friction because when they do come together, come together 
they will be like, oh, is this? You still have That's why I said I don't regret it, because those things have through. to happen. Like, you have to melt, and the melding process is not smooth sailing. It, if anything, marriage teaches you patience, mm -hmm. teaches you what love really looks like, because it was in that fifth year, dealing in counseling and dealing with things that we're dealing with in that season, that, you know, I, I, I had to study the scriptures about love. And I struggled because I felt that I was a loving Christian. And when I looked at 1 Corinthians 13 and it says love is patient and love is kind and everything that love is supposed to be is a doing thing. And I was always thinking, me, me, what I need, what I need. I don't know that I was consciously serving any of, you know. So even in terms of forgiveness and you forgive, it, it, it covers all your errors. I wasn't doing that actively. I knew that I could. I had the ability to do that. But I realized very quickly that, and I, I tell you very often, one of the things I think is really in, in society, you know, is people saying love is not enough. Mm. That is what is enough. Everything else is secondary to love because love as it should be is what kept us together. Mm -hmm. Me, I allow myself to, to adjust to that, to be patient with you, to support you through, to be kind, you responding in that same manner. Love as a decision, love as, you know, God's kind of love, not only the romantic, because that one will, <laughs> it, we're supposed to be there all the time when we pray by faith. <laughs> but the real love as it is, even even as I am now, 10 years in, it's, I, that's the, I think that's the only thing that really, 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 really grounds me. That's the anchor that I'm doing this. This is love. This is what love looks like. If I say I love you, I don't just throw it around. My actions will depict that I do love you from what I understand that love is and what I expect love, you know. And that's why it's not only when you're doing right to me, but I can serve love to you even when you're not pleasing me. Is it easy or the best thing? Of course, it's not the ideal thing, but... I, that's one of the biggest things I took away from all the learning is that love is actually the ingredient that makes it work. Love, not romantic love, love like agape love. That distance one is, I think, is just a danger for a, a younger couple because we think we talk about it often and say people who are more mature in marriage yeah, the can deal side, yeah, yeah the can, flip side, if you're more mature I you mean, can't it's not ideal it's not ideal still but you can deal with because oh, you yeah, found you yeah, got you yeah. go you have a rhythm you've got a system you, you know each other and you know so how to connect so when something is even off you would know something is off because you have a system or you have a way of connecting but distance early marriage is like learning to mm. fly before you can walk in a sense so mm. It's not, it's not, it's learn not, to, it's learn to crawl and to walk, and if you have to be a part, but after you sort of, you know, you've matured. Mm -hmm. It puts a lot of pressure on the marriage. Whether you know what the pressure will look like or not, whether you even discern that there's pressure on your marriage, is a different thing. Mm -hmm. Because what made me come home was realizing, ah, this house supposed to, people are supposed to be. Like, I was like, it, even, it was even, and now I say selfish, I think of, I think of our, our son, uh, when we only had one child at the time, that you, you were, we could excuse it, but you're not there, really. And the things he wouldn't needed his dad for, but because of my decision or the choices I was making, I wasn't giving him that opportunity or even giving you the opportunity because I had chosen something that wasn't for all of us, it was mostly for me and worked for me. Yes, it did have an effect. And I thank God in all of it that there were learnings and there were positives. A lot of things, a lot of good things came out of it in terms of even the healing that needed to happen and the conversations that needed to take place and the everything. And uh, the counseling did help. I think that was so instrumental because it, it launched into a different season of marriage. I would also say that one of the things that, at least from my perspective, we were five years into marriage. We only had one child. It wasn't because we didn't want one child. It wasn't that we're not trying to have more kids. It just wasn't happening. And yeah, at a certain time, it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It's and I guess you were a bit chilled. Wasn't the plan. I don't think it was the plan to just have them like right up there. We, we waited. Oh, no, no. Or the waiting may have been circumstantial as well because you're not available. But you also came quite often. You know, I, I couldn't mail it. So. <laughs> yeah, you joker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you came. We're not busy. <laughs> yeah, anyways. You came quite often. Yeah, and true. yeah, so I really, for me, anyway, personally, because I had my struggles with it in terms of, wow, is, uh, we haven't had another um, pregnancy and it's not that I don't want it. It's not that we're not doing anything. And not to be too graphic, it's like I hadn't applied myself <laughs> in that direction. So it wasn't happening, and I was getting a bit wary, like, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And one of the things that happened in 
counseling was that that came up in a way in terms of I remember the one of the counselors saying something about um you know that some you know that even I needed healing so you know there was there was there were things in, I was dealing with I hadn't I was just storing there and grief in itself hinders things like doesn't let things just you have to let some things just go and then have that release and then allow yourself a new lease and you just take on life again and just live fully and all that and it wasn't long after that without any effort this is like actually just letting go of not it must happen while we're not having another baby you know me taking it to like a project <laughs> and then i suddenly let it go and left it one day you ask me like ah when last did you and i'm like ah okay and i check and I'm, we're pregnant and was i found it was for me it was deeper than just that maybe for you you were not ever really worried mm. but at a point i i got really worried because I felt like, okay, I had, a, I had a, we had our first child what, a couple of months into marriage, and it's not like we've not been, you know, intimate or anything. So I was wondering why it's taking this long, why it's not happening. And at this time, I didn't come home. We're even going through counseling. We're doing, you know, I've been at home for months. It's not like anything. And I thought that by now we should have conceived because we, you know, that was the intention, and it wasn't happening. So I was very, very, you know, worried about it. And then when I finally decided to let go and all those things now took place and all that, and you even verbally apologizing to me, like, I'm sorry if you felt. And then us dealing, going through that process of dealing with the fact that I always thought you didn't grieve my brother and all that, then you apologizing and we just choosing to choose each other and move on. I think that was almost like a renewal for us in terms of, but in this together, this is what marriage is. And one of the lessons from marriage counseling was, and I'd never had that knowledge consciously before, even as a Christian, is that there's no out. When we took the vows that we took, it wasn't with the that there was a back door somewhere just in case it didn't work out. And that reminder that I took vows and what that meant and what I should move forward, you know, thinking about them. And so we knew in our vows at that time and moving with that, with a different mindset, really. I haven't gone back to that place in my head. I've stopped uttering those. If you don't, in fact, I don't. <laughs> I sure I've lost that vocabulary. I'm not doing it again. It hasn't come out of my mouth, you know, because you also told me, that's, that's why I mentioned that you actually told me that when I was always saying those things, you started to believe me. And when I actually was away, you took it, some, some part of you felt that I had gone, I had left you. Even though you didn't actually tell me that, but you, be, you kind of had accepted that this girl has left me, right? You said it to me, you know, I sometimes drink counseling, and I just realized, oh, wow, do you mean those five words, I'm not doing it again, or... Me just saying, in fact, if you know, if, if, it get, if I get tired, I'm leaving. So I said it, even if I said it five times, I just planted so many seeds of that and it was growing somewhere and you believed it. So when I took the, that two year hiatus of I'm living in the UK, you just took it that, okay, yeah, I'm gone. And I didn't know that was happening at all. So counseling to help that come out and we're able to deal with that. And I re removed, that, <laughs> removed those off of my mouth. I no longer use that as a method or a tool to try to manipulate anything. Um, Tools and methods are not necessary. Formula is not it's going to work. No formula. It's not, it's, it's not it's formula. It's still advice. <laughs> Nobody even told me, but I think that was a mechanism for me, even not, not only in romantic relationships, but whenever I felt something was threatened, that was my response. Mm. Like, let me check out, please, I beg, you know, so that you won't hurt me. And nobody, let me just protect myself. And I just carried it into relationship with you and carried it on into marriage. And thankfully God has delivered us from that one. It's not an issue. Um, apparently, it's not like we're without or what. I, I feel like it's been almost smooth sailing since then because there are less and less emotional tantrums, less and less outbursts, and more maturity. I, I look back and I don't recognize myself in, in many ways because even the fact that sometimes you would say that, you know, women should respect her husband early in marriage, I understood it differently and I wanted to. You know, make sure you always felt respected or honored or all that. It became what I wanted. It wasn't that you were even striving to make me be that person. So I think the healing, it did more. Yeah, maybe grief, grief triggered that, all those things. But then it healed more than just that for us because mm -hmm. it got us more aware, okay, why are you married? This is what marriage is. And so in renewing our vows and looking at marriage in a different perspective, it has been good. I can't say for the first time after counseling, we started doing date nights and all those lovely things. Except, you know, last year, <laughs> we didn't do, but really and truly, um, I really can't say that I, I would change anything. Mm. Oh, I remember when you now told me, ah, 
gosh, that was, I've been healed of that. When you, when you <laughs> encounter it, you told me that you won that I married the wrong person. I went to faint. I said, me, the wrong person. It was like a knife to my heart. And I realized that I was doing the same thing that I was ready to work out anytime. Just to clarify, when you speak on the, you know, respecting, I'm not a traditional guy. Term, kind of guy, and, and I presume a lot of people in my generation, I mean, and I'm not traditional, so when ladies hear about oh, respect, respect, it's not from that traditional um, perspective, but in any relationship, there's respect. There is. There should be. The, yeah, in Both the relationship ways. between uh, second and third born, there is respect on one level, you get your interactions. It's just respecting that, you know, you are, you know, a person and mm. is separate and an individual and there's certain ways that I shouldn't. Respecting is respecting your, even your emotions. So as you say, I'm not expert. I think, you know, maybe the least, the less expressive a person is, probably the more intentional you need to be about how you deal with their emotions. Because every human being is emotional, one is devoid of emotions. It's just some people Express have, a, yes, they have a better valve at, you know, expressing it. Um, so yes, I, I felt just to highlight that so that um, you know, you know, people don't sort of look at oh, this is not a traditional, um, you know, perspective. I know that things are different and and you know, in different times, you know, everyone needs deserves respect, and yeah. everyone needs respect, respect yeah. and it's in, and a lot of this is down to, the centered around it. Well, at least starts from communication, right? Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. I don't know why it's coming to my mind. Well, how has our marriage changed and you? And it's here that you want to ask it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, like how has our marriage changed you? You know, you probably won't come and tell me one day that, oh, this marriage has made me more. Uh, it's how it's changed me. It's changed me. It's, it's changed me mentally, to be honest. Yeah, um, more emotional. <laughs> yeah, for one. More expressive. For or one, for one. More PDA. Uh, well, I'm obviously not enough for you still. Ah, so we're yeah, so please it. hold my hands in public. No, but the, no, I mean, we do that. Um, so f obviously, <laughs> you like, like are you my so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, cut off your wife. No, I'm joking, not no, that bad. No. It's not that deep, but you get what I mean. Mm. Like, no. So, which is the thing that you say um, about backgrounds? Um, it is our experiences and our backgrounds that make us who we are. Yeah. Okay. Different childhood experiences and/or traumas and/or you know make you a certain way. A certain way, and. Um, and for me, it was probably a more stoic type of you know, individual. I was, um, so I look at my son, the way my dude, the way Olumide day is now, and sometimes, you know, I, <sighs> in your perspective, I'm a bit stern with him, but the truth is I look at him and I, and I see who I, you know, who I was as a child, right? A child in a stable, loving environment. At least he doesn't see the, but he sees some of the fighting, or he sees some of the fighting, at least it's, you know, it's loving, right? Um, and then I, I see that and I know that, you know, and then I know after that when things were different and I changed, you know, as a child. So yeah, so became less talkative because that's what everyone around said to you, you know, and we didn't, You say that we didn't, to say that you're not, grow, you're, yeah, you're yeah, growing, yeah. in my family, we kiss and hug yeah, and lick so our faces. Family, I mean, that's not one thing I still, I still need to, you Even know. My, um, <laughs> I, 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 I remember my brother, my brother kissed Jay like, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. love you. And yeah, I mean, this is like, What's going things on? that don't happen in my own family. Like, <laughs> my, whole, my own we family. Express, we express love different. Now that you know, we don't have. It's of just course, different. Yeah, it's different. So you we know, are very so, touchy feely. Yeah, her family very touchy. Oh, I love you. Ending calls with I love you. I still struggle when my mother-in-law says love you. I'm like, I've gotten used to it now. <laughs> and you were like, love you too, mom. <laughs> I don't be like, you're doing well. Generally, so obviously, it's made me. It softened me in a certain way. It warmed you. Yeah, it's You're warmed warmer. me in, in a certain <laughs> way. And it's also taught me why, you know, it taught me levels of patience. There are levels to this thing. <laughs> With me? Where I thought, where I thought nice I was, me. Where I thought I was, like, patient and I could deal with, you know, anything. You know, marriage took me to zen levels of, <laughs> of, of, um. of patience. Right? <laughs> <laughs> centering. So yeah, that's that's the other thing. Marriage has changed me, really changed me. Ah, I, I look at, I can't correct myself sometimes, I'm like, ah God is at work. Mm. My mouth is not as um <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Maturity, patience too. Um yeah. 
I wouldn't change anything, really, 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 even with all the things that have had to happen and brought us here. I wouldn't, mm. I don't think that I would, I wouldn't. Is there anything you would change? <laughs> don't take time to answer. <laughs> No, this, to be honest, no hesitation, you know, please. You know, I said in but I agree with questions. You know, I said in the beginning that this, mm -hmm. um, the journey is the is the destination is not the the journey is as important as the destination. Mm -hmm. you get what I mean? And that's been our journey. It's swof, swof has formed our. We're story. still learning. Always still. There's always so many. There's always, there's just too much room to keep growing mm -hmm. and unlearning. So we know that because we've been through that journey, we know that we have you know some of the tools to deal with the next, you know, next season. And, you know, she's, I suppose if then everything was smooth sailing and then... You're you not know, rich one place reach, and you don't have the equipment. Um, My style... Of parenting. Of parenting um, doesn't always... Um, uh, what's the word? Align. With, it's better. Uh, yeah. I understand it better Let now. Let me not say that mine doesn't align with yours. It's like uh, both our, our styles were um, at one point further apart than they are now. They're more complementary. Yeah, now. no, com more complementary. Um, to be honest, so that's for me. That I think that's the only. The main thing. How about time and so, resource? I mean, I think maybe the only thing to say in then that is also that we've had to learn. Look, and we're not perfect, and we don't do this anywhere near as much as we should. But at least we know that we should. Is, is learning. It's just like in marriage to having children or raising children is work. You're it's, not like prepared it's either. It's is intentional. So read. Yeah. If reading is your thing, if you can't read, read. Or bottom line study, however it is. Whether it is reading, whether it is um, listening to people, um, just watching, you know, how people who've had, you know, raised children successfully in quote. Um, have done it, but it's intentional. It's an intentional thing. Very if you want a certain outcome, you need to be present. In, you also, need to be present. You need to put in the work. Be willing to learn. That's all that. Um, the way we were <laughs> raised or parented is. They like, did that to me too. Am I not okay? Who told you? you get, <laughs> who told you you're completely says, okay? Well, completely. <laughs> who told you you don't have completely guys. okay? <laughs> I mean, just just a minute ago, we we're talking about my. To be honest, my emotional. To be honest, if I, as I'm emotionally stunted in certain ways, but I understand why I am. You get, uh huh, and is. But that's part of even mm -hmm. being better prepared to be a dad, because yeah, yeah. then you're more aware of where you probably have your limitations or things that your tendencies would allow you would make you do mm -hmm. that may not be ideal. So then you, you're more. Well, but like, things to protect my children from, because I know how I like I said I changed mm -hmm. and circumstances, certain things happened, significant things happened that made me a different person mm -hmm. in that regard. And so I can watch out for those, those things. So, our, so the way we're raised and parented, like, is the, you know, just, you know, throw seed into the, and, let, and it's a sprout. <laughs> however it grows, is however it grows. <laughs> you know, it's not ideal. If it's, if it's supposed to be a creeping plant or, you know, crawling plant, put the structures in place. Be deliberate, be intentional. Yeah, and no, none of our children are the same. Yeah, exactly. Oh. No, 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 the no, same. no, no, the same. So you can't say it's, you know, it's, again, it goes back to that being intentional. Learn. Don't say this is how I was, this is how I was And humility, and too. To use the same methods. You know, to correct your own approach if it's wrong, mm -hmm. because at least you have that. You have that. You, you hear me out when I have something to say in terms of, ah, babes, you know, this guy might think that this, 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 and then you would, oh, it's true, it's true, okay, I'll do my best, I'll try. Because you, you, I'm just saying, being able to sound each other out, even in parenting, mm -hmm. and not feel I'm going to be judged, you're coming at me, you know, or whatever. But that we're on the same team and we want to raise whole, well-rounded kids but, yeah. that make us proud. And we know that we're not just here as um, figureheads to give instructions, mm -hmm. but to model what we also want to see in them and, and be present in the, in, the, in the way we parent them. So well, that for us is a work. And I think that unites us more than anything because we're always trying to learn. Yeah, ultimately, it's balance because there is merit to, you know, the things that I say as well like my approach definitely yeah. i've learned that yeah there's merit to it in like <laughs> can't raise kids only with cuddles <laughs> yeah <laughs> or spank balance, and cuddle the balance well spank and leave let the effect also enter be, also because you want also because you want you want to build them with some resilience as well because they, they need that resilience for the world mm. um yeah, so can't can't raise them with kisses and cuddles alone very kisses and cuddles very important is what i learned yeah <laughs>
Um, so we're, we're allow allowing someone. And I'm very, don't, don't get me wrong, I mean, you, again, I, I have to You've changed because so you're able to understand yeah. this. I'm not, so you, you, people, may, people may listen to this and think, oh, and my approach is very stern. No, it's not. I'm actually very sweet, untraditional, very relaxed, very, very. It's, um, it's in the other parts that I'm not well equipped for to realize, okay, I, you know, I need to be more, I need to show more um, cuddles and kisses. <laughs> Deliberately. <laughs> See, we're still learning. We're still yeah, in. Yeah. We're still in that. In that. We're still we in that are, boat. We are, to be honest. Always will be in that boat, yeah. I guess. Uh, and we just need to be sure that we're intentional for because the teen years are. Uh, <laughs> They'll be good. <laughs> next phase, prepare, prepare for. So hopefully, we will. We have a few more years before we get the first teenager. Hmm. But we should, I mean, rem, rem, take so much reminder so that we need to be intentional about us, that as well because don't just walk into it. There is a way to yeah, yeah. parent and raise teenagers. It's 10 years of, it's 10 years of reminding myself that I chose this because you need to as well. Um, that's part of being intentional. Um, it's reminding myself of why I love um, Matilda. It's, um, it's also realizing that, the old, I mean, whatever might have been the alternative outcomes, like, oh, you know, maybe saying, you know, oh, you know, staying single or whatever it is, let, opportunity costs. Because for logical minds, that's, <laughs> that's things that those are things that we kind of analyze as well, and like oh, the opportunity cost of not going down this path. But the truth is, this this journey has been beautiful, to be honest. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that we're here. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> Woo! You swept me off my feet, babe. This mm. is this is us being reborn. Mm. That's where I feel. I feel like we're in. in a new season almost because not in a not in negative sense where we are no longer enough as in just you can't just stay in that place now it's more like okay so what's next and I guess it's more to do with um, a greater purpose for all together mm. and, and, and I guess we're expressing that you know together mm. I think that's what I think that's what because you have to keep like you said, it's almost like a way of reminding yourself that you're together for a purpose. There's a reason to this, and it's not just, it's not bills, it's not kids, it's not, that's not, it's not the end of it. Okay, yeah, you, know, you, have, you live together, you have children, okay, so what more? I think that keeps you more. So for me, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not gratitude. I'm learning, I've learned now. You know, it's interesting how initially there was a time I was always, you know, I wanted a lot of things to change about you. I want you to change the way you do this, change that, I want you to be more this, more that. But in the process of surrendering that entire that process or th those struggles, I realized that it's more of me who has I've been the one who well I've changed more. You know, in learning that there are things about you that I've had to like this. This is still a love journey, which is why for me that's the biggest anchor for my own marriage is that love is the reason. Mm -hmm. Love is what has kept us. I, I strongly believe, and I, I just believe that, and that's why I'm st you know we still push for ways to improve and how do we serve each other better? What am I doing? What can I do better? What can I do differently? And investing in our marriage, even though because of the society and busyness and work, we don't always have room to do everything we want to do. And that's one of the things I think I can improve greatly is just even having more time for one another or each other. But yeah, I'm just in that place, just looking forward to, to what's next for us. Marriage is, is sacrifice, is <laughs> patience, is growth. It's it's the it's the willingness to be. I guess maybe it means maybe see as sacrifice, but it's, it's the willingness to be molded, even if it's through what you might view as pain. You know, it might be a painful process in in your transformation and your change. Revealing all those things within. Yeah, but yeah. 
it's just like I, I guess um, as a butterfly is born, it does go through some pain <laughs> coming out of the cocoon, right? So it's the willingness to go through that, and not when you're going through the pain, say, "Oh goodness, uh, nobody told me about this. This is not what I signed up for." Not for me. For. I'm coming it's not out. Not for not recognizing that it's part of the process. Mm. Yeah. Marriage to me, it might sound like a cliche, but it's two becoming one, really, because, like I said, when we were talking earlier, talking about all those issues or the things that were it was like friction. It was was what was us coming to, was about us coming together and melding. And even the things that we have grown to accept and even change has not allowed us to become one really united in many things, supporting each other, accepting each other consistently, accepting and choosing each other. And I think that marriage, marriage is a phenomenon. I think it's a blessing. It's a beautiful experience. I don't think there's anything I would... I came into marriage. You know, it's ironic that I was one that was saying, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. But I came into marriage expecting that and believing for bliss, for, for something good, something beautiful. And I still have that, I still have that expectation. And I'm starting to see it unfold before my eyes. I'm grateful for that. But marriage to me is, um, is two becoming one, really, 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 really. Two people harmonizing. I don't want to get poetic. <laughs> <laughs> harmonizing, you know. But yeah. yeah, because you know it's interesting. I'm the outspoken, emotional. You're, you we balance each other out. It's almost like by design, we're opposite of each other. But I need you. You need me, because otherwise, I'd probably be. You know, I've learned to be more zen, <laughs> and you've learned to be warmer and softer. So it's almost like it's been there's been a balancing out, and it's a, just a beautiful melding, melding together. So I make you better. You make me better. Yeah. <laughs> blush, blush, blush fully. No, yeah. Blushing. Uncontrollable. <laughs> I was the same color as my dress. Mm. Hmm.